Everything is set into motion. Everything is coming together. The next things that will happen will be the rapture of false peace and the seven-year tribulation, second coming of Jesus Christ, the millennium, the great white throne judgment, then the new heaven and new earth, the eternal state. Welcome everyone and shalom and peace be multiplied on everyone that is here listening. Very quick, please subscribe to my Telegram channel. If you go to the Telegram app, search Tony Stu 316 without a space or the link for the channel is below in the description. Everything that the Bible prophesied is coming together while the world sees things as coming apart. We are going to go over the Bible prophecy, the Word of God together, and we will also walk through some of the events happening around the world and see that what the Bible prophesied is indeed coming to pass and continue to come to pass. Just as the Bible says, the world is heading into a global power system, one world government. The world is building up a one world religion. The world has increasing birth pains with increasing disasters like volcanic eruptions and earthquakes in higher levels than ever before. There is an alarming pace picking up in the development of the mark of the beast technologies, such as artificial intelligence, neurochips inserted into the brain, and also humanoid robot that has artificial intelligence that can speak and that can perform complex tasks. The world is moving very fast into digital currency, where the ability to buy and sell, buy groceries and pay rents can be turned on and off based on our behavior and global surveillance. Everything is prophesied in the Bible. But the most important of all is the event that we are all waiting for, the rapture of the church. Even the world will grow darker and the things will become more chaotic and the world will be more dependent on technologies. However, that is not our blessed hope. The darkness is reserved to a left behind world. But if you are saved, we are looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, for our precious and beautiful bridegroom to run and come down to take his bride to heaven for seven years for the marriage of the Lamb. The Bible says right here in the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, and we will begin with verse 8. The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh, leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roll or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love my fair one, and come away. Yes, Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up with them to meet the Lord in the air. Thus comfort one another with these words. We have the comforting word of the Bible of the promise of the pre-tribulational rapture of the church. He will come and he will tell us to rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away, and come away we will. Most important issue, Jesus can come at any moment for the rapture of the church to take us to heaven before the seven year tribulation period, where God will rain down his wrath and divine judgments upon the whole world, culminating in the ultimate wrath, the second coming of Jesus Christ, where the church who was raptured will come back with Jesus in the second coming and establish the millennial reign of Christ. The only way that we will be raptured the moment he comes is that you are saved. 
Please be saved right now. Realize and know that sin is something very ugly. And we as human beings are all born in a sinful state. Ever since sin entered the world in the beginning of human history. Because we are sinners, there's nothing we can do, no matter how much work we do, no matter how hard we work. Even for a million years, we can never earn ourselves to heaven because heaven does not allow any sin. And nothing can remove our sin except the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, God himself, knowing full well that we cannot save ourselves, he came down in the flesh 2,000 years ago. He lived a perfect life. He was tempted in all ways, just as you and I have, yet he did not sin. And he died on the cross for all our sins, was buried and rose again. I repeat, he made the full payment for our sins. That is the necessary payment for our forgiveness and the removal of our sins. So if you haven't been saved yet, please put your faith and trust in Jesus' finished work on the cross and his resurrection. And at that very moment, you are saved. And if you were to die today, you will know 100% you're going to heaven. And when Jesus comes, you will be raptured and you will not be left behind. Now let's go directly to the first event. Global tech outage hits airlines, banks, healthcare, and public transit. The blue screen of death hit Microsoft users around the world Friday, resulting in grounded flights, hampered public transit systems, and disrupted operations in banks and hospitals. While various systems have already been restored, ripple effects from the major technology outage may continue throughout the weekend. CrowdStrike, a U.S. cybersecurity firm, that advertisers being used by over half of Fortune 500 companies said one of its recent content updates had a defect that impacted Microsoft Windows operating system, adding the incident was not a security incident or cyber attack. Earlier today, a cross-strike update was responsible for bringing down a number of IT systems globally. A Microsoft spokesperson said, in the U.S., thousands of flights were canceled Friday morning. American Airlines, Delta Airlines, and United Airlines were among those who grounded flights less than an hour after Microsoft said it resolved a cloud services-related outage that impacted several low-cost carriers. Every line is long, said Chance Ortego, 31, whose flight to New York was canceled Friday morning. Public transit system in the U.S. reported impacts. The Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority in Washington, D.C. said its website and some of our international systems are currently down. In New York City, the Metropolitan Transportation Authority also said its buses and trains were unaffected, but some MTA customers' information systems are temporary offline. Around the world, the outages disrupted London Stock Exchange, caused major train delays in the UK, sent British broadcaster Sky News off air, forced medical facilities in Europe and the United States to cancel some services, and caused disruptions at airports in Europe, Singapore, Hong Kong, and India. Look at how much the world has increasingly counted on technology, how symbiotic the relationship we really need technology, the smartphones, AI, and everything that's developing. Imagine as we go on, the globe will enter into a realm of a technological renaissance. The AI, chips that can be put into the brain, even be linked together where the implant can control all the devices that around the person. And imagine also a digital currency where the government or whoever is in power can shut down your ability to pay and purchase things, to buy groceries, to pay rent, or any other financial exchange, or even be paid your paycheck. 
That is what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13. And that is about to come to pass. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. They would be an antichrist. And after the rapture, where millions of people will disappear, those are Christians born again into the family of God. They are all in the body of Christ. They are all sealed by the Holy Spirit for the rapture. They will be taken away. There will be great chaos. There will be great chaos than this technology outage will cause. The technology outage today is simply a preview of the greater chaos that will come in the seven-year tribulation. There will be many triggers of that. One of them would be the rapture, where there will be vanishings of literally millions of people. There will be an antichrist who will come in and confirm the Daniel 9.27 covenant. And he will allow the temple to rebuild, be rebuilt. And the confirmation will be between Israel and many nations. It will be favorable toward Israel, causing a temporary peace where there seem to be peace between Palestinians and the Israeli people. Even the daily sacrifices that the Jews cannot perform for thousands of years, they will be able to do it again. However, in the middle of the seven-year tribulation, this same Antichrist will have received a mortal wound to his head where he would appear to have died in front of every screen, but resurrected, mimicking Jesus Christ. And everybody will wonder after the beast. This false prophet will stand beside this Antichrist and he will make all to worship the Antichrist. He will make all to assemble the image of the Antichrist in the likeness of the Antichrist, that image will be able to speak. That is very crazy. Look at this false prophet in verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live and had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So what happens in the future is that the Antichrist in the middle of that seven-year tribulation along with the false prophets will cause great miracles and lying wonders like causing fire to directly fall from heaven downward toward the earth. And this image of the beast which is, could be the Optimus AI of Elon Musk, plus other technologies, much more advanced than the state we have today. And also Neuralink, which is in the scalp, but not in the forehead yet. But the Bible tells you that eventually it will end up being in the forehead. Double-blinded trial, placebo-controlled, shows that the forehead will be the most effective with the least side effects. You know, that would be what happens in the future. Elon Musk also said that this chip will link directly to the Optimus AI. Do you see that? There's a linkage between these two systems that is explicitly described in Revelation 13 in the Bible. Now let's take a closer look at the next event 
Now, when we look at Bible prophecy, we have to center in onto Israel, as Israel is God's chosen nation, the fig tree. And its leaves started to bud May 14th, 1948, when the nation of Israel was born in one day. Now look at this article right here. Israel is at war with Hamas and about to be in a full-blown war with Hezbollah in Lebanon. It is facing attacks from Houthis and all around surrounding her. Houthis claim credit for drone attack on Tel Aviv, one killed, 10 wounded, an explosion. Houthis claim credit for drone attack on Tel Aviv, 10 wounded in explosion. A drone attack was allegedly carried out on Ben Yehuda Street on the corner of Shalom Alechem near the U.S. consulate after loud explosions were heard in Tel Aviv early Friday morning. The Yemeni Houthis have claimed responsibility for the attack on their personal channel. During searches by emerging services, the body of lifeless man in his 50s with shrapnel marks on his body was found in an apartment near the location of the explosion. 10 people were taken to the hospital with minor wounds, according to Israeli media. Police, fire, and rescue services were deployed to the area and told Israeli media that there was no fire. The source of the explosion is not yet known. An IDF spokesperson announced that a primary investigation shows that the explosion in Tel Aviv was caused by the fall of an aerial target, which did not trigger a warning. According to the Saudi Arabia-owned Al Arabiya channel, the United States intercepted a ballistic missile and three drones launched by the Houthis at Israel on Friday night, but the fourth managed to hit Tel Aviv. It seems that the intended target was the United States consulate. You know, Iran wants to destroy Israel, wipe Israel off the map. It calls Israel the little Satan and the United States the big Satan. So it wants the destruction of not only Israel, but the United States as well. The idea is continuing to investigate the explosion. Residents who live near the place of the explosion say that objects were shattered in their houses as a result of the blast. Soon after the attack, a leader of the Yemen Houthis, Hazem al-Assad, wrote on X, formerly Twitter, Tel Aviv with a burning emoji. The spokesman of Yemen Houthis said on X that the group will reveal details about a military operation that targeted Tel Aviv. Israel is under attack on all sides, and it is trying to wipe out Hamas in the Gaza Strip, facing grave, growing anti-Semitism around the whole world. The Bible says, that after the rapture, an antichrist will confirm a covenant between Israel and many nations that will ensure the building of a temple right there on the Temple Mount and the daily sacrifices to resume. This is just as the Bible prophesied, we are heading into that direction. The war that is now present requires that there will be a peace covenant that comes, and that will be the rider on the white horse, the first seal judgment, according to the Bible, the official starting point of the seven year tribulation period. That can only happen after the rapture of the church. The ground offensive against Hezbollah will be a great war. It will be horrendous on a scale that is not even comparable to the Hamas war. It will get out of control. Drones and rockets will fire from Iraq, from Syria, from 
Lebanon from the Houthis, it will cause a dramatic shift and burning in the Middle East. But somehow through that, all of that, with divine intervention of God himself, Israel will come out with a positive outcome somehow and have leverage to broker a deal with the help of the Antichrist, the Mr. Fix-It-All, who will eventually solve the problem between Israel and Palestinians, Israel and the Arabs, that no one has ever solved that problem before and, and bring peace to the Middle East. Only to shortly after, follow shortly after by the rider on the red horse, war, and then by the rider on the black horse, famine and pestilences, and the pale horse of death, the fourth seal that claims the life of one fourth of the earth total population, around two billion people out of the total eight billion people that is about to come on the earth. If you haven't been saved yet, please be saved today. Everything is indicating that the world is going into that direction. Tribulation is coming very fast upon this earth and God's judgment is to be feared and is awesome and is very unpredictable and greater than our imagination in a scale that we cannot imagine. We do not want you to be here. God does not want you to be here in the tribulation. But all it takes is from our free will to accept the free gift of eternal life that Jesus Christ offers. He already paid the fine for our sins, the payment that is required for our sins to be forgiven. All we need to do is receive that payment through faith. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, that by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That means the grace is what saves us. Jesus dying on the cross, even though we as sinners, we do not deserve it. He loved you so much that he did it anyways. But how do we claim that gift and receive that gift? It is through faith. So do that today if you haven't. Another crucial sign the Bible says will come to pass is the increasing anti-Semitism and persecution of both Jews and believers in Jesus Christ. Israeli parliament considers emergency aliyah in response to French anti-Semitism surge. The Knesset Committee for Immigration, Absorption, Diaspora, Affairs convened on Monday to address the rising anti-Semitism worldwide. The protection of Jewish communities in the diaspora and the government's readiness for an influx of immigrants to Israel. Since the beginning of the war with Hamas, 3,714 Jewish French Jews have opened Aliyah files for Israel. According to the Knesset, 68% of French Jews do not feel safe and 38% around 200,000 people are considering emigrating from France. The Jewish agency has reported a 400% increase in Aliyah files among French Jews since the war began. The Knesset noted that 60,000 French Jews are eligible to immigrate to Israel immediately. Additionally, 3,300 candidates who have opened Aliyah files in France over the past three years plan to move to Israel in 2024. In another event, Submit to Allah Infidels, Deadly Islamic Threat Targets Paris Church. Look at what happened here. Archbishop Lefebvre prophetic warning to the French to ask the government to stop Islam based on his belief that the two religions could not coexist resulted in persecution, yet his prescient message now resonates 
as a glittering reality in France today. Paris, July 17, 2024. The Notre Dame du Travail Church of Paris was vandalized between the night of Sunday, July 14th, and Monday, July 15th, with a deadly Islamic threats. The vandalism involved blasphemy, vandalism, and attempted arson, insulting slogans were sprayed, painted on the church walls, including, submit to Allah, infidels, pray five times a day. They said a bad name about Jesus, then it says, one God only, Allah. The church will burn first, it says. The last prophet, Muhammad. Heads will roll for the Christian world war. We Muslims cannot accept this whore of a religion. Not only in Europe, but it has moved to the United States as we all know. Islamic migrant attacks seen in Europe. Now in New York City, Jesus statue beheaded by Islamic taxi driver. Many questioning the silence of New York politicians, noting that a similar incident at a mosque would likely provoke violent responses, street protests, and condemning statements from leaders. In a shocking attack, a Muslim taxi driver in New York City was caught on video decapitating a statue, a statue of Jesus and spitting on it outside a Catholic church in Queens. This incident captured on surveillance footage has sparked outrage and raised serious concerns about Islamic intolerance toward Christians and other unbelievers. We see attacks all over the world. In fact, Christians are the most persecuted group in the whole world, and that will only increase. After the rapture, the restrainer, the Holy Spirit in believers will be gone. And the Antichrist will start heavy persecution of the Jews when he steps into the Holy of Holies in the midpoint of the seven year tribulation, three and a half years after he confirmed the seven year covenant between Israel and many nations. Those who are in Judea must flee. Other believers that are believing in Jesus and other Jews they must flee and escape the great persecution that is increasing already right now. And it will be at its greatest height in the middle of the seven year tribulation only to grow. So indeed, all the signs are converging. We believe Jesus is coming not because of only one sign. Everything is converging, increasing birth pains, one world religion, one world government formation, increasing development of the technology of the mark of the beast, just to name a few. But let me leave you with a word of comfort, a word of encouragement from the word of God. If you are a believer, we don't have to fear any of those things. We are looking forward to meeting our Lord, our beautiful bridegroom in the air and spending seven years in heaven, looking down upon the earth as they undergo and go through seven years of tribulation period because we the church is not appointed to God's wrath. First Thessalonians chapter 5. The Bible says in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am and Jesus is in heaven, there ye may be also. Praise the Lord. We are all waiting for the blessed hope and we are to continue occupying, sharing the gospel, knowing how urgent the time is. The church age is about to come to a close when the church will be removed from this earth. This is the age where we are saved by grace through faith alone, in Christ alone, plus nothing else. So it's so urgent for you to be saved if you haven't by simply trusting on Jesus' complete redemptive work on the cross, 
where he shed his blood as a full payment for all your sins, and that he rose again on the third day. Let me leave you with a blessing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace.